Hi, my name is Scott Zerzicki, and uh, I grew up wanting to make movies uh, when I was in middle school and high school, and I would always force my friends to be uh, in my movies, and my biggest influence at the time was probably like all the action films of the 80s and early 90s, like the Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Desperado, anything with a lot of guns. So here's an example of one of my films uh, with my friends starring in um, from high school. I went to film school in Rochester, New York, where I met John French, and I was roommates with Nick Urban, and we made lots of films together, freshman, sophomore years just about until the time when he was uh, taken away by a pterodactyl. And look at this. This is such a nice day. I really do not want to be here right now. Yeah. Oh, Nick! No, not you! Nick! Nick! One of my favorite films I made at RIT was a short experimental film about a microwave that traveled through the countryside and city. Uh, made it with uh, Mark Grezik. And uh, there he is with the microwave and the table that we carried around with us. We attached a camera to the back of the microwave and shot through it. For some reason, we decided that would be fun and easy. And uh, here's a picture of him carrying this beastly microwave that probably weighed 80 pounds. And he would hoist it onto the table and we would shoot through the microwave. And here you go. After we all graduated from RIT and um, most of us moved out to Los Angeles, we got together and we made a, a, f a feature in Michigan, Niles, Michigan, together, and we made a feature in Connecticut uh, called The American Poop Movie. And uh, it was super fun to be a part of that, and I was the director of photography, I think John French produced it. And uh, it was good times, you can buy it on Amazon, it was our first um, release anywhere. So I want to thank all my fans for making me a minor celebrity here on campus. Now turn off that TV and come on down here and party with us! Yeah. Let me guess, last year you were at the top of the world. Yeah. And now? Not. 2007, my friend Mike Battle wanted me to help him out on a project he's working on for The Simpsons TV show. And uh, so I went over to his house and he had built this set here uh, with the the complete Simpsons cast in front of their couch and let's see. here it is a larger scale and we had the animated model up so we could kind of copy it exactly we shot it uh, over the course of a couple nights in different scenarios uh, video camera and still and the stills ended up working the best and we shot JPEG um, yeah then the uh, the other thing we found is instead of removing Instead of adding the Legos, which is in the final product, we found that it was better for stability if, if we build it all, make it secure, and then slowly pluck a Lego out. So what you're seeing is actually the reverse of the final product. And there he and I are in front of the Legos. It was in uh, season 18 of uh, Simpsons. Cool. Bye. For the past few years, I've been creating my own music videos uh, with friends, and one of them I did for Matthew is uh, his own song, his own song about being a lesbian. Check it out. They all love me, not think I know why. I just might be a lesbian in the body of a guy. So there's some of my films, past and present, and uh, I hope you like Gunspool.
Hello, my name is John French, and I am currently camping, but uh, I am fulfilling this month's duties uh, for this project, uh, filming something and interviewing myself. As long as I can remember, I've always been trying to be creative and wanting to make movies and uh, films. And even as a kid, I was making movies with friends. And when I wasn't with them, I was using my dad's computer and this amazing piece of uh, software called Disney Animation Studio, uh, which I really think uh, changed my life. Uh, it was just a, an amazing program and all running on this old 386 computer through MS-DOS. But we had our Batman and our Dick Tracy action figures and G.I. Joe guys and we tried to do stop motion but you couldn't do it very well with the video. So we tried to do our best to do stop motion and when we couldn't we, you know, made do. I remember I would do these like horrific Space Ghost mini movies and Star Wars things. And then in junior high and high school I would still make movies for, for projects. <laughs> And these I actually got grades for, which is ridiculous. Whoa, freeze! No way, man! But uh, as long as I can remember, I've always been been trying to do uh, things like that, and I'd, I'd always kind of wanted to come out to Hollywood and make movies. So. Um, when it was time to go to college, I went to uh, Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York. Um, and I went there because it was the home of Kodak and the home of Xerox, and I figured if the film thing didn't work out, I could fall back on the photography program. Um, but uh, there I met uh, Scott Zarzicki in, uh, I think, the first day of classes in Jack Beck's Production One class. And I thought he was a total weirdo, and I thought he was a big stoner because he talked so slowly and his eyes were always glazed over. So I thought he was sort of a weirdo, but uh, you know, over the years after that, we became pretty close friends and realized that we're sort of, you know, I was always trying to do like a narrative type thing and Scott always wanted to do kind of more experimental things. But I think we shared the same passion for just trying things. And Scott and I worked on a bunch of films together. Scott played a, a fighter pilot in a film I made called Burrito. <laughs> After college, you know, almost my whole close circle of friends, we all moved from uh, Rochester out to Los Angeles, hung out and worked together since. And we've, we've made some films out here with other friends and some of them have been distributed. If I hear one more person ask me, what are you up to now? I'm gonna rip my own dick off and stab myself in the neck with it. And I, you know, I started working at the uh, G4 network, which no longer exists. And I started working on a show called X-Play. And like that first week of work, I was so happy because there was just skits and crazy things and characters. And I think the first week we were there, there was like a, a Kill Bill parody we, we did and zombies and all these little like skits. Not that they were high art, but I, I think I loved doing it because it just felt very free. And you know, you, you, you still showed it to, you know, someone at the end that signed off and was like, yeah, that can go to air. But there wasn't so much, I guess I'd call it interference. Like during the edit, if you had a crazy idea, you just could make it work. And um, I think, you know, if you watch like the early days of uh, Conan O'Brien's Late Night, uh, because no one was watching, there was no pressure, no ratings, so they did do whatever they wanted, and they were just wacky and zany, and I think the less you take into account who you're doing it for, and you're, if, even if you're just doing it for you to amuse yourself, someone out there is going to have those same sensibilities and think it's, it's, it's funny. You know, I've gone on and I've worked on, you know, lots of other shows and shorts and web series and music videos. I love live music and filming live music. I think is, you know, something about it is actually, again, you get to see the creativity uh, unfolding right in front of you. You can see a, a unique moment being created. And that's actually sort of maybe the point of this, this project is uh, organically chatting and coming up with an idea. What about this and I have this idea and well I have you know my friend has this camera and my friend wants to help out this week and what about this and this and, and then at the end you can spit out like a little project and it you know it doesn't have to be anything great it's just what came about with uh, with no restrictions and no uh, <laughs> network notes and no um, I don't know, hesitation it's just meant to be freeing and getting your juices out, Scott Zerzicki. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this is okay. Scott, you're probably going to end up cutting this together because uh, 
despite the fact I said we had to do something no matter what, I don't think I have time to finish this. But uh, that's it. That's my interview. And uh, oh, I didn't sync this one. This is the second take. Slate at the tail. So thanks for watching. This is John French signing off from a campsite in the middle of nowhere. Good day.